Tonight, police investigating two drive-by shootings in Wyala and history made in South Australia as voluntary euthanasia laws pass state parliament. From our seven Spencer Golf Studios, your nightly news with John Hunt begins now. Good evening, everyone. Wyala police are investigating two drive-by shootings which occurred in the city early this morning. They allege a motorcycle was involved in both incidents and the shootings are linked. Reporter Mark Zeta has more. Just after one o'clock early this morning, police were called to this house at Wyala Playford after reports of shots being fired. The occupant of the house on Rudall Avenue told police a bullet had gone through his front window with a motorbike allegedly taking off from the scene. A short time later, officers were also called to another house at nearby Elliott Street, where another drive-by shooting was reported. Police say another bullet was fired at the front of that house. Fortunately, no one was injured in both of the incidents. The occupants of the Elliott Street house told officers they saw a man in his 20s flee the scene in a red Honda dirt bike, wearing a white dirt bike style helmet. Police also believe the rider was wearing a helmet camera during the incidents. Just before midday, SES crews were called at the Rudolph Avenue house with metal detectors, trying to find any other pieces of evidence from this morning's incident. Police were contacted regarding this case, but was unable to provide comment. Officers from the Wyala CIB are continuing to investigate the circumstances. Police believe both shootings are linked and it was a targeted attack. Anyone with information is urged to call Crime Stoppers. The growing COVID outbreak in Sydney is sending ripples across the country, with borders closing and Broken Hill Court in the middle. State Parliament thrown into chaos, with a minister testing positive and others forced to quarantine. The writing was on the wall, but in the end, there was no warning. And I announce now that effective immediately, I will put level six restrictions in place for New South Wales. From yesterday, only returning residents and essential travellers are allowed to enter South Australia. They must get tested at regular intervals and quarantine for 14 days. Anybody living or operating within that 100 kilometre buffer in New South Wales will be able to travel unrestricted into South Australia. A relief for those in Broken Hill, although Sydney siders are now banned from travelling to regional areas ahead of school holidays and police will be enforcing this. I don't think we'll see a lot of changes in tourism at the moment, um, but we are thinking of all those that are in Sydney. For Broken Hill residents who have been more than 100 kilometres from the border, including places like Menindee, there are provisions in place to enter SA with masks and testing requirements. Since the pandemic has started, this is perhaps the scariest period uh, that New South Wales is going through. Eleven local cases were reported in the state today. Minister for Western New South Wales Adam Marshall among them. A number of politicians and staff is tested and forced to isolate. Colleagues are going through that process this morning to ensure that nobody enters uh, the chamber to pass the budget until all of those assessments have been made. Both the Premier and Health Minister remain adamant a lockdown isn't needed yet. Lachlan Itter, 7 Spencer Golf News. After 17 attempts over 26 years, history has been made in South Australia today, with State Parliament allowing voluntary assisted dying to become law. The move makes the state the fourth in the country to legalise voluntary euthanasia. For terminal cancer patient Ian Hamig, Having the choice to end suffering has lifted a massive weight off of his and his family's shoulders. I won't press that button until I've had my last kiss or my last hug from my wife and my children. And that's how it should be. It's, it's all about being dignified and having that choice. The voluntary assisted dying laws passed Parliament this morning, which will see South Australia become the fourth state to legalise euthanasia. There have been so many stories that have been shared and so much suffering that has happened. It's, you know, it's hard to believe that it's finally here and, you know, people's suffering has not been in vain. 
Assisted dying would be allowed for residents aged 18 years and over who have incurable or a terminal illness. It's got a lot of checks and, uh, and controls, but at the end of the day, it's enshrining compassion and choice at the end of, uh, at the end of life. So it's, a, in my view, a positive move. Patients could access voluntary assisted dying as soon as the end of next year. A number of safeguards will be in place, including requiring the approval of two doctors. I've uh, seen my dad uh, go through a horrendous um, experience in, and I'm sure if he would have had access to voluntary assisted dying at the time, he would have, uh, he would have used it. Edward McCarroll, 7 Spencer Golf News. An upper house inquiry will be launched into floodplain harvesting in the Darling Basin. Greens MP Kate Fairman will chair the inquiry, which is set to investigate the legalities of the controversial practice and how water usage could be effectively licensed and monitored in the future. It comes after the upper house disallowed the state government's proposed regulations in May over concerns it could damage the health of the Lower Darling. Still to come tonight, GFG gets a reprieve over upcoming court action and a region battered by wild and wintry weather with power cut to thousands of homes. Welcome back. Gale force winds and heavy rain have lashed the Air Peninsula over the past 24 hours as a cold front sweeps across the region. The wild weather also cutting power to more than 2,000 residents around Tumby Bay. A wintry blast battering the Air Peninsula. Wild and woolly conditions hitting the region over the past 24 hours, while an abnormally high tide kept local businesses and residents on edge. This time we've had a bit of a heads up and uh, been able to uh, get a little bit more organised. The Bureau of Meteorology saying solid rainfall totals have been recorded. 17.2 millimetres at, uh, at uh, Coulter uh, and uh, we had 14 millimetres at Point of Void which is uh, just along the uh, uh, western coast of the uh, Lower Peninsula there. There was 12 millimetres at uh, Coffin Bay and 10 millimetres at Port Lincoln. Strong winds also causing concern with a number of trees toppled while residents in Tumby Bay lost power with an equipment failure and fallen pole to blame. Port Lincoln did have a gust of 80 kilometres an hour at about 10pm uh, on Wednesday night. The king tide forcing Port Lincoln Council to close the jetty swimming enclosure. By 1.30 this afternoon, the well-known structure was almost fully submerged. Council's actions receiving praise from locals. Big rap for Council. Um, over the last few days they've been, um, they've been awesome. Dylan Smith, 7 Spencer Golf News. The future of the wireless steelworks has taken another turn, with Credit Suisse agreeing to a six-week pause on legal action it's taken against GFG Alliance. Local leaders cautiously welcome the news, with hopes a final agreement will soon be completed. A deal to secure the livelihood of thousands in the northern Spencer Gulf. GFG Alliance agreeing to a formal standstill with Credit Suisse, buying time for a complete refinancing of their Australian operations. It feels as though things are um, slowly moving in the, in the right direction. Um, there's still a lot of water to go under the, um, under the bridge. Credit Suisse was seeking to liquidate the Australian arm following the collapse of lender Greensill Capital. The six-week pause giving the company a chance to fully refinance Liberty Primary Metals Australia, which operates the Wireless Steelworks. The member for Giles pleased with the results. So I think there is a realisation there about the importance of the steelworks at the national level and at the state level. And we just need to get through uh, this, uh, this later set stage. The Australian Workers' Union is hopeful a final deal will soon be done. We can uh, take some heart that clearly that refinancing is going along positively. In a statement, a GFG spokesperson said the two continue to work hard to resolve the remaining exposure of funds following the collapse of Green Seal Capital. The company also expects refinancing to be complete within those six weeks. Those workers and the community of Wyala should be congratulated for just focusing in and doing what they do best, and that's making Australian steel. Mark Zeta, 7 Spencer Gulf News. 
The Port Lincoln foreshore redevelopment was a big winner from Tuesday's state government budget. City Council welcoming the multi-million dollar funding commitment. However, it's still in the consultation phase. It's a place Port Lincoln Council is keen to modernise, but the foreshore redevelopment isn't a cheap project. Their plans, however, received a boost this week from the South Australian budget. It was great to see confirmation of the funding for the foreshore redevelopment here in Port Lincoln in the state budget uh, this week. Uh, it just reaffirms the state's commitment to regional areas. The state government allocating $3.6 million to the project. What we're doing is, is we're utilising the money that we've got from the state government along with money that we're getting from the uh, local government finance authority to uh, complete a substantial project on the foreshore which includes upgrades to the Pancala Trail. As well as the trail, other key infrastructure will be upgraded. Seawall uh, and more importantly the 160 year old jetty uh, that the town loves so much. While community consultation raised some concerns, the Mayor believes benefits outweigh the negatives. What we're looking at is, um, is looking at across the board demographic for the city of Port Lincoln, not just young people, not just old people, but something for everyone. The council hoping to turn the first sod within the next six months. Port Lincoln City is all, all, already a beautiful city. What we're going to do is enhance that. We're going to make it better. If we don't do anything, we're going backwards. Dylan Smith, 7 Spencer Golf News. Stay with us. Broken Hills Union history celebrated through song. And the Molka Art Prize exhibition now open to the public. The Flinders Ranges has been confirmed as the home of South Australia's newest national park. 60,000 hectares of land southwest of Lee Creek has been declared the Nilpena Ediacara National Park. It will be home to the renowned Ediacaran fossils, which have given scientists an understanding of the evolution of life on Earth. Up to 500 million years old, fossils of that age cannot be found anywhere else in the world. The South Australian government says the listing will help their bid to get the entire Flinders Ranges on UNESCO's World Heritage List. Stories from Broken Hills past have been brought to life through music. Songs in the Round seeing artists with a shared passion for the city host moving performances inside the iconic Trades Hall. Music distinctly Broken Hill performed in front of a captivated audience inside the Trades Hall. Songs in the Round, a sometimes emotional reflection on the Silver City's difficult beginnings. We're playing songs to honour the rich union history here in Broken Hill. Um, but we're also playing songs about far west New South Wales. Many of the artists local to Broken Hill, the group first playing together around campfires at Mutawinji and on the banks of the Darling. The significance of playing at the Trades Hall not lost on these passionate performers. This has been a kind of heart of this community for a long time and it's really nice to be able to sing music in it. Classic songs from our region. <laughs> to self-written masterpieces. I hope that they feel ignited by the joy and the spirit of struggle and resistance that exists in this town. A town coming together to reflect on how far we've come. Lachlan Itter, 7 Spencer Golf News. Residents in Wyala had the opportunity to talk to their local councillors at a special pop-up booth at Westland Shopping Centre. Community Connections is a council program aimed at developing relationships with local residents. A special emphasis in today's session was the need for pet owners to be responsible and register them. People also had the chance to talk directly to council staff about other issues affecting them and their community. This year's Molka Art Exhibition is now on display at the Yata Pertley Gallery, showcasing the works of Aboriginal artists from across the region. 
the exhibition will crown a winner during the upcoming NADOC week. Colour is abundant at this year's Malka Art Exhibition. The Malka Art Prize has been running in Port Augusta for the last 12 years. With elder, open and junior categories, a total of 38 pieces reflect the cultural past and present of the region. I think it's just good for the opportunity to get Aboriginal art out where, where the whole population can see it and to provide a focus point for it. A lot of people come to the regions to, to have that cultural experience and this is a great example of how they can have contact with that. This past winner has a special connection to the exhibition. It was actually started 12 years ago by my first cousin Marvin McKenzie. Um, so to, to take out first place, it was, um, it was amazing. She is encouraging the locals and visitors to check out the pieces on show. Voting for the Malka Art Prize opened yesterday and will run until July 8th. I think it's really important to come down and support the local artists and to see what they have to offer. And of course it's always appreciative if a piece is purchased because it does go back to the artists. The exhibition will be open here at the Yard of Pertley Gallery until the 16th of July um, and the winners will be announced during NAIDOC week in the first week of July. Edward McCarroll, 7 Spencer Golf News. Stay with us after the break. We will check what's biting in the Spencer Golf. And Alex Sykes will join us with the latest weather details. Hello again. Time now to go around the Spencer Golf and see what's biting when we go fishing this weekend. Here's our experts with their tips. G'day and welcome to this week's fishing tips from Port Augusta, Jewel the North. Well, Squidoo Everett, as you'd expect this time of year, you can really get good feeds. Uh, down along the Chacks, down even to the Yatla Harbour, up into Port Patterson, just about wherever you want to get a feed of them. A few snook getting caught out in the middle bank around the Letty Spit number 9 bank. Uh, crabs are basically non-existent, but there are some good King George Whiting going around as well. Now around this time of year, there should be a uh, at least one whale up here by the end of the weekend. It's the old man's birthday and there's always at least one whale up before then. So we'll see if that uh, theory rings true. That's all we have from the Jewel of the North. Welcome to another week around the Gold Fishing Tips. I cannot believe that cold weather last week really brought it on. But I'll tell you what, by the time we got to Saturday, Sundays, there was just perfect timing for some of our King George fishermen. I've seen a lot at Port Davis being called in um, over the, the, the afternoon on Sunday. They got a little bit of breeze. The Third Creek patches on Port Piri side and uh, Checkerboy also producing some good sized fish. We talked about salmon, so don't forget that they're available around the place. Snook. Um, we did suggest that you have a trawl about that and squid, well, they're just going pretty good, I think. So that's all we've got this week. We'll see you next week. Hi guys, Whaler Fishing Tips this week. Little bit better weather this weekend and some nice fresh tides. Land based across Whaler, the local jetty holding some nice numbers of squid. Best again late afternoon. Also down towards the Point Lowly and Becky Point Rocks, there's been some nice snoot coming in along there and a few small schools of salmon, so work those. Out on the boats down towards Mount Young, great numbers of squid still and also garfish in the same areas. And the hot tip for the large King George Whiting have been down towards Cowlitz Landing. Here in Port Lincoln there's been some salmon trout and some tommies off of the main wharf and there's been some nice whiting caught off of the rocks in proper and porter bays, especially late in the day. There's been some whiting from uh, Carcass Rocks down to Taylor's Landing and there's been some really nice blue mulwong caught. Moving over to Coffin Bay, within the bay it's mainly been salmon trout, tommies and a few silver trevally. Um, but whiting are still going well through the farm beach grounds. That's all for this week, stay rugged up and we'll see you again next week. To the weather now and after a wintry few days, it's time to see how the weekend is shaping up. With all the details, it's good evening to Alex Sykes. Thanks John and I can tell you now that the weekend is set to bring with it better conditions than what we've had so far this week but more on that a little later. From 3pm today as Dylan reported earlier a cold front swept across the Gulf, Port Lincoln showers in 16, Port Puri showers and 17 and Coffin Bay showers and 15 degrees. Looking further out across the region now, a shower too in Port Augusta 18 degrees there, while it was 17, Broken Hill, Cleve and Kadena were all 14 degrees 
degrees. Adelaide and Woodna both 15, Clare was 12, Cooper Pedy reached 16 degrees. Taking a look at the satellite image now, areas of thick cloud over the lower southeast with a low and around the west coast with a trough are bringing rain and a few storms. Patchy cloud over much of the rest of South Australia with a cold front is producing a few gusty showers. Moving on to tomorrow's weather outlook now and we'll start with the Gulf waters. West to southwesterly winds 20 to 30 knots, seas around 2 to 3 metres and south to southwesterly swell below 1 metre. And as we've already mentioned a short time ago, there were a number of warnings current for South Australia, including marine wind warning, a warning to sheep graziers and a severe weather warning for damaging winds and abnormally high tides. Showers again tomorrow, Port Lincoln 15, Cleve and Woodna both set to reach a high of 13 degrees, Waller and Port Augusta 15, Kadena is set to reach a high of 14, Port Pirie and Broken Hill will both also reach a high of 14, Clare 10 degrees. Taking a look further through the week now, showers across Adelaide, and Kadena on Saturday, cloudy everywhere else, partly cloudy across the rest of the region on Sunday, except for in Port Lincoln and Adelaide, where it will be showers and mainly fine conditions are forecast for Monday. And that's all the weather from me for tonight. John, I'll see you in a little bit weather, with a weather update. It's back to you. Some welcome news there. Thanks for that, Alex. And that's the local news this Thursday evening. Thanks for joining us. I'll have updates later, and we will be back tomorrow night before the footy at 6.30pm. Until then, enjoy your evening. Good night.